Module 3, Session 2. Session 2 will cover Learning Outcome 4.3.2 Make predictions based on validated experimental or theoretical probabilities. Learning Outcome 4.3.2 Make predictions based on validated experimental or theoretical probabilities. Now that your students have some terminology under their belts, we can move on to the application of probability. We use our understanding of probability to make predictions about future events. For simple or single probability, we calculate the probability of an event happening using the probability formula we introduced earlier. Probability of A equals number of favorable outcomes divided by total possible outcomes. For compound probability, we need to consider whether events are independent or dependent, mutually exclusive or mutually inclusive. A chart can help guide students for applications involving compound probability. When working with the word AND, students need to determine if the events are independent or dependent. When working with the word OR, students need to determine if the events are mutually exclusive or mutually inclusive. Let's take a closer look at some applications of each. The probability of independent events occurring. Remember that independent events have no influence on each other. The probability of two independent events occurring is the product of the probabilities of each event. Probability of A and B equals probability of A multiplied by probability of B. Now please do this calculation on your own. Two identical, fair, six-sided dice are rolled. What is the probability of throwing a six on both dice? Let's take a look at the solution. Two identical, fair, six-sided dice are rolled. What is the probability of throwing a six on both dice? We can call our dice A and B. The outcome of one dice does not affect the outcome of the other, so we are dealing with independent events. For each die, there are six possible outcomes, and one of these outcomes is getting a six. The probability of throwing a 6 on die A equals 1 over 6. And the probability of throwing a 6 on die B equals 1 over 6. For independent events, probability A and B equals probability of A multiplied by probability of B, which equals 1 over 6 times 1 over 6, which gives us a probability of 1 over 36. Teaching tip. This formula for calculating the probability of independent events also gives us a way of checking whether or not two events are independent. If the probability of both occurring is equal to the product of the two probabilities separately, then the events are independent. If the probability of both occurring is not equal to the product of the two probabilities separately, then the events are dependent. Let's look at the formula for calculating the probability of dependent events. Remember that if events are dependent on each other, it means that if one event occurs, there is a direct effect on the second event. We use this formula to determine the probability of two dependent events. Probability A and B equals probability of A multiplied by probability of B following A. This can also be written like this. Our model for this is drawing a card or a ball without replacement. To work with this formula, we can follow three steps. First, calculate the required probability with the starting number of favorable outcomes and total number of possible outcomes. Then, work out what the change to the number of favorable outcomes for the second event is and the total possible outcomes changes too. Calculate the probability of the second event following the first. Then, multiply the two probabilities together as you did for independent events. You can do this because you took the change of number of outcomes into account. 
Let's explore this in an activity. Work in pairs and teach each other every step as if you were teaching your students. A bag contains eight black, five yellow, and three red balls. Two balls are drawn without putting the first ball drawn back in the bag. Calculate the probability of drawing two black balls. Here's the solution to the problem. A bag contains eight black, five yellow, and three red balls. Two balls are drawing without putting the first ball drawn back in the bag. Calculate the probability of drawing two black balls randomly. The first draw and the second draw are dependent events because there is one less ball in the bag after the first draw. Let the probability of drawing the first black ball be 8 over 16 because there are 8 black balls and a total number of 16 balls all in all. This gives us one half. We now have only seven black balls, five yellow balls, and three red balls in the bag. So the probability of drawing the second black ball following on drawing the first is seven over 15. Because we now have seven black balls and a total of only 15 balls left in the bag. Using the formula for dependent events, we know that the probability of drawing the two black balls in a row is equal to the probability of drawing the first black ball times the probability of drawing the second black ball following the drawing of the first, which gives us 1 over 2 times 7 over 15, which gives us a probability of 7 over 30, or 23,3%. Let's look at the probability of mutually exclusive events occurring. Remember that mutually exclusive events cannot both have a successful outcome at the same time. To determine the probability of two mutually exclusive events occurring, we use the formula probability A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B, which can also be written as probability of the union of A and B equals probability of A plus probability of B. Work in the same pairs as previously to do this activity. We have the same bag with eight black, five yellow and three red balls. One ball is drawn from the bag. Calculate the probability of drawing a ball that is either yellow or red. Let's take a look at the solution. The same bag from the previous example again contains eight black, five yellow, and three red balls. One ball is drawn from the bag. Calculate the probability of drawing a ball that is either yellow or red. Because there are no balls that are both yellow and red at the same time, the events are mutually exclusive. So we say that the probability of drawing a yellow ball is 5 over 16, because there are 5 yellow balls in the bag and a total of 16 balls all in all. We can say that the probability of drawing a red ball is 3 over 16, because there are 3 red balls in the bag out of a total of 16 balls all in all. Because our event is an OR event, we know that the probability of getting a yellow or red ball is equal to the probability of getting a yellow ball plus the probability of getting a red ball. This is equal to 5 divided by 16 plus 3 divided by 16, which is equal to 8 sixteenths. Then we simplify to get our final probability of a half or 50%. Now we turn to calculating the probability of mutually inclusive events. Remember that mutually inclusive events can have an intersection. To determine the probability of two inclusive exclusive events occurring, we use the formula probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B 
minus probability of A plus B, which can also be written as the probability of A union B equals probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Let's do another example. Work in your pairs again. A card is removed from a deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that the card is a king or a red card? Let's take a look at the solution. A card is removed from a deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that the card is a king or a red card? Because there are two cards in the deck that are both kings and red cards, the king of hearts and the king of diamonds, the events are mutually inclusive. The probability of drawing a king is 4 over 52 because there are four kings in a deck of 52 cards. The probability of drawing a red card is 26 over 52 because half the cards in the deck are red. The probability of drawing a king and a red card is 2 over 52 because there are two red kings in the deck. This is the intersection of both events. Because our events are mutually inclusive, we know that the probability of getting a king or a red card is the probability of getting a king plus the probability of getting a red card less the probability of getting a red card and a king, the intersection. So that would be 4 over 52 plus 26 over 52 minus 2 over 52, which is equal to 28 over 52. Simplifying, we arrive at a final probability of 7 over 13 or 53,9%. The last important events that students need to work with are complementary events. Remember that a complementary event is all the events in the sample space other than the given event. If you calculated the probability of all the events in the sample space, the probabilities add up to 1. Two events are complementary to each other if their combined probabilities are 1. We say that the probability of not A equals 1 minus the probability of A. For example, the probability of getting a 1 on a die is 1 out of 6, and the complement of this is the probability of not getting a 1. To find the complement, subtract the probability from 1. So the probability of not 1 is 1 minus 1 over 6, which gives us 5 over 6. Now, please try working with the complement yourself. When you toss a coin, what is the probability of not getting heads? Let's have a look at the solution to the problem. When you toss a coin, what is the probability of not getting heads? Because there are only two possible outcomes, not heads is the complement of heads. They are complementary. The probability of getting a heads is one half. The probability of not getting heads is one minus half, which is also one half. Teaching tip. The key to finding solutions in probability is working out how many possible outcomes there are and how many favorable outcomes there are. Guide students to use sketches to help them count all the outcomes correctly. The key to successfully mastering probability calculations is to learn all the possible options and types of events. Teach students to really read the questions carefully to make sure they understand what is being asked. Make sure they practice lots of examples. <laughs>